Greetings, Slashaholics, and welcome to another episode of After the Slash, where we talk about uh, pretty much anything horror-related that's on our minds, um, with our customary about 20-30 seconds of recapping what we were talking about in the uh, corresponding episode. Uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Um, read it. Let us know yeah. what you think. Check out the audiobook. Uh, had some guest patron voices in that one. Uh, if you're watching this, maybe you're one of the ones that voiced a character. Uh, but yeah, that, that book's a lot of fun. Uh, it's an alternate take on the movie. So if you're a fan of the movie, listen to the audio book. You'll get, you'll get an idea of what the movie was supposed to be uh, compared to what we got. And that about wraps up our talk of that. Uh, it looks like tonight's probably going to be dedicated to the Saw films uh, and whatever you have planned to talk about. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go with you first. Uh, what, do you, what do you got written down? I know you've always got a list. What do you got? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by asking you a question. Uh-huh. How big of a franchise do you think is dedicated to The Ring? What, like four movies? Yeah, Girl Coming Out of the TV. Yeah. Four movies? I had no damn idea how big this franchise was. Holy hell. It is... Five movies? <laughs> five five books, one Japanese TV movie, about eight Japanese uh, cinematic movies, one Korean remake, uh, three American films, there is a video game, there is a manga series, and there are two Japanese TV shows. It's all The Ring. Wow. Okay. It, it blew my mind. And they so trying to he, they trying to beat Godzilla? Well, I started watching it because I'm watching Godzilla. Dude, I got nine movies to go until I finish all thirty six. Have you seen the one from like two thousand and three yet? Like destroy all or uh, where he fights all the different uh monsters? No, I'm on SOS right now. Okay. There's one so, where he fights uh, Zilla from the 98 yeah, movie. Yeah, I've seen footage of that. I, I can't it's wait. It's like 10 seconds, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually also... Did you know there was a 40-episode a cartoon that branches <laughs> off of the 1998 Matthew Broderick one? Yes, yes. I used to watch that, yeah. I'm watching that, too. It actually, it actually fixes a lot of the problems a lot of people have with the American version, but The Ring. So here's what happened, okay? So here's the book right here, right? They made a TV adaptation of the book. It's a lot different than the theatrical versions. And it was really low budget. A lot of people didn't like it. It's, it's free on YouTube if you ever get the chance to watch it. It's on my list. I wanted to wait till I finished the book. Well, since the TV movie didn't do great, they altered the plot with a test audience and made the theatrical version, which is what the American remake is based on. Yeah. Well, when they made the sequel, it's based on the book sequel... And everyone hated it. So they branched off and did a, a theatrical sequel, which, you know, kind of got adapted into the American remake sequel. Well, they wanted to keep making movies based on the books, so that series goes in one direction, but the theatrical movies go in another direction. The Korean remake, it, it branches off the TV version, I think, and then, then they got the third American one. I don't know where the fuck that branches off of. Uh, it's just like all these intertwining, like, I, I have to use a road map to figure out which ring I'm watching. <laughs> um, but the book, the book is utterly fantastic. I can completely see how they made a TV show based on the first book. There is a lot of big stuff in that book as far as explaining everything, uh, opening up more doors to the, because I think the ring was supposed to originally be a book trilogy that got turned into five, but... There is a prequel called Ring Zero that actually is about the girl. The whole movie is before she went into the well. And it's it's really, really good. Like, you know, I, I was like five minutes to the end and I'm like, is she getting thrown in a well? Like, this is really <laughs> far off what I thought was going to happen to her. Um, but it, it had to be one of my favorites in the entire series. But I'm working my way up those. Okay. Uh, keep us updated. Uh, yeah. Let us know when you finish the Godzilla ones. There was a Godzilla one that got made like two or three years ago in Japan that I heard is really good, where he like morphs throughout the movie. Yeah, uh, Shin, Shin Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, that's on my list. I heard that's uh, good. 
Yeah, I've yet to I see like, Kong versus Godzilla. I'm still holding off on that. Have you seen uh, the 1960, this 1963 Godzilla versus Kong? When I was when I was like seven, I bought a VHS of that at a yard sale, and I watched it so many times until it quit working. Um, I love the original. Um, I've, I've avoided all spoilers about Kong versus Godzilla. I'm waiting for a chance to watch it. I have a theory about why he looks like the bad guy in the trailer, and uh, I'm waiting to see if I'm right or not. I think somebody I think spoiled playing... that. Somebody spoiled that for me, and I was so angry. I'm, I'm, I will not say any more on it. I'm just saying that, like, I wish they hadn't have said that. I just feel like the American version is trying to pull in like uh, more Japanese stuff, so they're gonna like have the Mecha Godzilla, you know, maybe with like a synthetic skin or something. That's what I'm thinking. Well, I heard Mothra's in it. I'm like, are they bringing back the two fairies, the the two little twins? Yeah, Mothra was in the last one. They're bringing Mothra back for Kong and Godzilla, Kong versus Godzilla. They did that. Oh, I I don't know. I'm just I, I heard uh, Mothra was in the second one, and I was like, did they bring back the two little twins? Uh-huh. No. Um, no. Thought that would that would have been fun. They tried to modernize it in one of the Mothra movies where it was actually like two twins. It was like a cameo, but they didn't really do anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, the last time we talked, I think I was on Godzilla eighteen. Now I'm on twenty six. Um, it was it, there was one Godzilla. I think it was called Godzilla Mothra and Ghidorah attack or something. Um, they tried to modernize it by saying that Ghidorah was actually a protector of humanity with Mothra, and Godzilla is powered by the souls of Japanese people who have died during World War II. That's what? why he's so powerful. And then yeah. Ghidorah, every time one of the Guardians dies, Ghidorah grows wings and then can use the laser. So it's like Ghidorah had to like amp up as the final Guardian to go against Godzilla. And that, that was pretty cool. That was a good way, you know, to, way to breathe new life into that. Uh... Do you have an unpopular horror opinion tonight? I watched Evil Bong 2 lately. That's neat. That's all you need to say. Um, you like it? You know, it. it's really funny because it keeps saying they're in South America, but like they're clearly like in North Carolina. Because um, I was watching it with a friend, and she's like, I keep hearing monkey sounds, but I don't see any monkeys. I don't see any indigenous people. Uh, they're clearly just on a trail, but... There's a part of the movie where these topless women are trying to roll a guy as a giant doobie so the king bong that's shaped like a skull can shrink him down and smoke him. And I just can't imagine what it's like if you're walking on a trail in North Carolina and you see this happening. Like, I I would have a couple questions. I would would definitely want to stop and check out what's going on because, you know, the topless women have spears, and that's awesome. (laughs) That's what you'd be looking at is the Uh, spears, huh? Just the spears. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, gotta, gotta, gotta keep it clean, you know. Cool spears. Uh, you know, I'm thinking uh, some of the early episodes of After the Slash, uh, making them start, the ones that are like at least a year old, uh, releasing them to the channel um, so people can kind of see what goes on in the after show. Um, that's something I've been thinking about. Patrons, let me know what you think. If that's, uh, if that's cool with you, I'm going to start doing that. Uh, it'll always be ones that are at least a year old. That way, none of the uh, newer stuff is uh, released to the public. That's strictly for you guys. Um, I was going to give my unpopular horror opinion, and it's probably going to set up some probably the rest of the discussion tonight. Uh, and we're going to end on and talk about a newer movie, Spiral, <coughs> uh, that we both have seen recently. Uh, but yeah, my unpopular horror opinion. I've gotten a lot of shit for this before, and I just rewatched the entire film series, the entire franchise. And I still hold this opinion. The best Saw movies are 5, 6, and 7. And I think Hoffman is superior to Kramer. That's my unpopular horror opinion. I think uh, Saw 5, 6, and 7 are the better movies. And Hoffman is a better jigsaw than Kramer was. Why is that? Because uh, he's, he's, he does more badass shit. He's, uh, he's a survivor. Even in uh, situations where it's not his life that's on the line, but like uh, his job, his uh, freedom, shit like that, the way the way he covers his ass and uh, this scene right here at the end of part five, uh, you know, when it's revealed that he was uh, one of the people helping Kramer, <clears throat> he gets Strom to 
not get into the box, get Strom to put him into the box, and then he gets to lay there and watch as Strom is killed, you know? And uh, then in six, when they're listening to the audio clip, you know, he knows they're about to reveal his voice, that it was him at the uh, scene of the uh, copycat uh, killer, uh, the one that he did first, the guy that killed his sister. And he's got the coffee pot, he's got the coffee cup ready, you know, full of hot coffee. He knows what's coming. He's, he's putting a plan together, and he walks out of that room uh, with two dead FBI agents and the uh, forensic tech uh, on the computer. And uh, part seven, uh, he takes out the SWAT team. He takes out he takes out so many cops in that movie. Uh, all the cops at the station. He he pulls the shit with the with the video. Uh, ends up coming out of the body bag. Kills Jill. Kills all the cops there. Has the trap set up to kill all the SWAT team back at the at the trap building. Uh, he's a badass man. He got a little cocky, and that's what got him killed in the end. Uh, you know he, may, he he took it too personal with Jill, but his time as Jigsaw. He pulled the traps off, and he kept himself uh, he kept himself protected uh, up until uh, Jill got away. But, I mean, look at the way he survived the reverse bear trap, man. He's a survivor. He was a badass. I liked him better. I think I think, I think uh, it's five, almost six, seven. go ahead. I th- it's almost bittersweet with him in seven because it's not that I didn't like him in the movie. It's that. You know, 1, 2, and 3 are a trilogy, 4, 5, and 6 are a trilogy, and 7, 8, and 9 were supposed to be a trilogy where he takes on the Mafia. He takes on all these... They were supposed to be bigger traps than we've ever seen, but they got their funding pulled because the the movies weren't pulling in at the box office. So they they just they threw all their ideas for Hoffman through 7, 8, and 9, descending into madness, starting to kill cops. But they just they threw it all in one movie, and it's not that I didn't like him in the movie, it's that... I I feel cheated from the trilogy he was going to have, completely washing his hands of Jigsaw doing his own thing, and we just got a serial throat stabber who eventually just gets locked in the bathroom. Like I said, it, it's not horrible. I just, I wanted to see 7, 8, and 9 Hoffman. Hey, I did notice a little thing. Uh, when you get the flashback with him, um, with uh, Jigsaw, and he's telling him about how his uh, his trap was inferior, you know? The one he, uh, the copycat thing he did, he ends up telling them that his blade was inferior, and yeah. we're led to believe he's talking about the guillotine. But I think even then, Jigsaw knew that he had used a serrated knife to cut out the jigsaw piece, because Kramer yeah. would have, Kramer would have mentioned that if he wanted to, because you know he knew that he he knew every detail. He didn't tell yeah. him that because I think he knew eventually that's what would get him caught, and he would, ha- and that would be one of his tests, you know, seeing if he could get out of it. Uh, and that's what eventually got him caught was the serrated blade. You know, it didn't match uh, the surgical precision of Kramer's. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, my wife is here with us, and we watched the whole film series together. So we're going to – I figured we could start at uh, part one and uh, just uh, talk about what we thought in the movies, all of us here, and to work our way through the franchise and end on Spiral. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, Sure. And uh, before I forget, I got to ask you: What did you think of Carrie Elway's uh, in Part Seven when they when they filmed him crawling out of the bathroom, uh, and he son- somehow got a lot of color back in his skin since Part One and put on about thirty pounds? Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it happens. I, I I didn't see them putting him on a <laughs> regimen or something to get him ready. They're just like, I think fans are going to be so happy to see him again. They're just like, yeah. Yeah, we don't care. Oh, I loved it. He's, he, he is, he's aged well. He's very distinguished and everything. Um, it's kind of like, uh, Todd in El Camino, you know? Uh, I didn't see that. Okay. He's like way, he put on like 60, 70 pounds since breaking bad. And they just went with it. Even though El Camino happens like right after, or, or uh, his scenes in El Camino happened right before we met him on the show. It's flashbacks. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's start at part one, uh, work our way through. We'll give each movie a rating, and we'll list our favorites uh, from, you know, best one to worst, in our opinion. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll start this off so we can kind of streamline it. We'll streamline it. Uh, part one, for what, before the sequels came out, I thought that that was like a really innovative original movie. Um, it, it didn't play heavy on 
it showed the a few traps and everything, but they weren't like as gory and shit as they were later. But they were suspenseful and tense. It made you go, you know, kind of like that. Uh, you didn't know what was coming. You didn't know that it was Kramer on the floor the whole time. And it set up the thing that I love about the movies, the ending with like the whole revelation thing with the music. Oh yeah. So I would give the first one, if I was rating like one out of five, without seeing the sequels, I would give it like a five at the time, even though it's not my favorite, simply because it was so original at a time where it was just all sequels, reboots, remakes, shit like that. It was the same shit getting recycled. Uh, Saul really stepped things up for movies. Yeah, at the time, I wasn't watching horror movies back in 2004. Um, uh, there, I, there, I had a friend who was just, just just dying to tell somebody about the ending, and he just blurted it out to me because he was like, hey, you don't watch horror movies, you're not even going to care. The guy gets off the floor. And I you know, I saw Text Change on Massacre, and it really made me want to watch Saw. But, but the whole time I'm watching the guy on the floor, so when the pig man jumps out of the closet, I about screamed. <laughs> um, I was not expecting pig man coming out of the closet. I was expecting guy on the floor getting up. So, you know, I, I still loved it. It had a lot of flash, had style. I absolutely love Charlie Clouser as the composer of the movie. Because um, he does all the Saw movies. He even collaborated for the video game. Uh, oh, I was telling her about the video games. Those games are awesome. There's yeah. one mini game where you got to reach into a toilet full of syringes and shit. And that yeah, one yeah. fucks with you. No, not in shit physically, no, no, literally. But, no. like, it's just just syringes. And uh, even though it's a video game, it's like, you can feel it. Uh, what would you rate the first movie out of five? I don't know. I'd give it a solid seven out of ten. It had a lot of class. You know, I... I feel like it, a lot of people compare it to the movie Seven, but I feel like Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt went together like milk and motor oil. You know, they, it, it didn't they didn't flow together. Um, but I feel like in this movie, all the characters had a good chemistry together. Um, Kevin so, Spacey carried Seven, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't uh, know. So, so yeah, seven I, out of ten. So five yeah. out of five, then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Beth. Okay, so one thing I mentioned the first time around, no, I wasn't looking for it, obviously. This time around, I noticed Kramer's feet, as he's lying on the floor, they change. They keep moving. They keep moving. <laughs> His toes are on the floor, then they're not. Then they are, then they both are, then they both aren't. And they, yeah. But I'm like that. I get those things. We started, we started watching just to see if his feet moved as he's laying on the floor. And they did a lot. They changed position. I was like, I guess he's getting toe cramps, uh, yeah. you know? I and mean, rigor mortis can only sit in so far and get some. Well, it's like, it's like me when I watch Face Off, and John Travolta's face is on Nicolas Cage's body, and at the end, he gets harpooned. But when they're in the ambulance, his hand moves a little bit, and I'm like, oh, Face Off too. But like, no, that's, that's just the <laughs> actor playing dead on the gurney. That, that doesn't, that's not setting up Face Off too. Um, you know, we can always what, drink. Uh, what would you give it? Uh, you want to... Me? Yeah, what, five out of five. Um, uh, five out, uh, what would you give it out of five? The first movie, based four, on your first watching of it. Four out of five. Okay, uh, why is that? I I was a I was a war movie buff then, still am. Um, I liked it, but I just didn't think it was like perfect. Okay, Saw Two. This one stepped it up. They went a lot further. The whole group setting. Uh, the thing I really liked about this one was the whole. Uh, your son's in a safe place thing. Uh, you know, we got uh, one of the new kids on the block uh, playing a character <laughs> whose name happens to be Eric Matthews, uh, who is also a character's name from Boy Meets World. You all right? Oh, TV in the other room. I heard like a loud horn sound. I'm like, what in the hell? Candy <laughs> um, cane. Be taken. Um, um, yeah, part two. Uh, the cap, the, the the police guy, the detectives is is Eric Matthews, uh, which I made a joke. Uh, Corey's older brother from Boy Meets World sure went dark and later in life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the traps in part two. Of course, I just mentioned the needles. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, as a nurse, <laughs> I didn't care for the movie as a whole completely. Like I give it a much lower score because I think that it. 
tried too hard. It went too far and too hard with it, trying to just – it felt like it stepped up the gore gratuitously instead of, like, innovatively. So uh, I'm going to give that one three out of five, part two. Not not my favorite. You're giving it a three out of five? Three out of five. Yeah. Same reasons? Same reasons. Uh, John? I liked it a lot. I mean, I, I got – this is the first song we got, I got to see in theaters. Uh, it was like – uh, the music was more intense. There were more set locations. There were more characters. There's inter- inter- interweaving traps because everybody has a personalized trap, but that might not be the person who stumbles upon that trap. So it it's, it, it takes the, the moral of it and throws it out the window. Like, I think the guy who gets shot in the eye, they said in the script that the, when, the, when the woman sticks her hands up in the razor blades, that was supposed to be his trap. But she was so desperate for the cure, she stuck her hand in. So it's just... And then uh, Xavier, the drug dealer, throwing Amanda into the pit that he was supposed to get into. I, I, I thought it was really interesting seeing everything go back and forth. You never really knew what people were going to do when they're desperate. It really reminded me of Cube. Oh, yeah. That's the um, one on my list I need to watch. That's a good one. Um, there, there's three Cubes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like you got Cube 1. Cube 2 kind of ups the scales a little bit for everything. Cube 3 is like the organization outside the cube dealing with people in the cube. So it's like watching one from the outside. Um, it, it's a pretty decent trilogy. Uh, I don't think they made any more. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've seen those. But yeah, um, I give it another 7 out of 10. I, I enjoyed it. Um, the director who did 2, he does 2, 3, 4... And then Spiral. They're all done by that one director, Darren Lynn Bowsman. Yeah, yeah. Um, Darren Bowsman also uh, played a big part in Repo, the Genetic Opera, and the Devil's Carnival movies. Yeah. Uh, There's a really interesting story about how he hooked up with the guy, uh, Terrence Zudnick, uh, who... Grave Robber. Yeah, Grave Robber and the Devil in Devil's Carnival. Um, He was uh, doing Repo... Uh, in bars and stuff in, in Los Angeles, uh, Terrence was doing like one scene. They would write one scene, like in, uh, write out the music, compose the music, go do these and like scene, one scene at a time at different places. And they had a bunch of different scenes, but not like a full cohesive story yet. And they were doing these. And one night, Darren happened to see it. And uh, the rest is history. Repo Genetic Opera got made, you know, made into a cohesive story and made into the movie. And anybody watching you should really check it out it's a it's an awesome production it's a rock opera so they're singing like the whole time but it's really it's really good and the devil's carnival movies are great too um i bought tickets i guess i didn't know what i was buying tickets to because i I was trying to surprise a friend who loved devil's carnival and devil's carnival 2 was traveling um i did i thought the actors were traveling along with it what it ended up being is the guy that plays the devil he and some of the crew were traveling with a copy of Devil's Carnival 2, yeah. and they were taking it from theater to theater, so I got tickets to that, so we got to get like autographs, posters, he got to talk about making the movie, and he was telling I'm funny so stories from on the road. So it I was really it. cool, I but soundtrack. <laughs> I had no idea what we were going into, um, but people were asking him questions and stuff. He, he, it was really chill. I'm jealous. Uh, they actually ended up not breaking down, not being able to make a couple, refunding it. Uh, the star of the second movie, the girl, uh, she ended up causing a lot of problems. Emily Autumn. Shit. Yeah, shit happened. Uh, she became like a prima donna drama queen. Shit happened, and he ended up losing that movie license just like he did Repo. Uh, so that they, they never got to finish the trilogy. Yeah. But uh, anyways. Uh, Saw three. three. Yeah, Saw three. Uh, okay. we're gonna, I'm going to streamline this a little bit. Uh, part three confused the hell out of me for a while because we had this whole new guy going through the trap. It really didn't... There were little hints, like at the beginning, his wife going to work. You know, she's dead inside. The guy in bed says uh, he wants her... He wants a divorce. She asks what, what he wants, and she's like, he's like a divorce. Um, you think it's a divorce from him. You find out later, you know. Um, this movie, to me, felt like a definitive end to the John Kramer trilogy. Yeah. Um, I like the way it ended. Amanda, you know, was rigging the traps. She failed her final test. Uh, I don't know. This one, it just confused me. And at the end, I'm like, what happened to the little girl? What happened to the little girl? Is he going to get... Yeah. So the little girl, he's going to let the little girl die? What the hell? Um, I would only give this one, like, 
I, I think I'm going to go with three out of five because I did like some of the traps and stuff, and I like the fact that uh, other people's lives were in his hands a couple times, and that's something that gets uh, revisited later in the franchise, and that was neat. Um, so, yeah, I'll give it a three out of five. I, or what were we saying? Uh, same thing for me, three out of five. Um, left the traps, and then, like Josh said, people's lives were in his hands. But yeah, three out of five, because it was kind of like, what? But yeah, that was the end of the Kramer trilogy. Yeah, I, I would give it a 5 or 6 out of 10. I mean, t- to me, the traps are a little, almost a little too gory um, for my personal taste. And I, I didn't like a lot of the characters. I felt like there was a good mix in 2. But in this one, I hated almost every character. Uh, so, I mean, the only character I really liked was dying in a hospital bed. Uh, so I, I found it difficult to really sink my teeth into this one. It was like, it, it kind of reminded me of... Um, it, uh, it was it was the honest trailer guy reviewing the Santa Claus, and it was like this jerk dad and his jerk kid and this jerk yeah. doctor and this jerk over here. I just felt like it was Saw Three. It was like so this jerk is rigging traps. This jerk doctor, this jerk that wakes up in a box. You know, just I don't know. Great great music. Absolutely love yeah. the soundtrack. Um, the revelation but, you know, was good. Finding out that yeah. it was Amanda's test the whole time that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, I love the revelations in these movies. I, I need to start basing some of my score off of that. Uh, the second one was pretty weak. Uh, it was kind of obvious that uh, Amanda was in on it. it uh, just, all this stuff you say is obvious. I like, it completely no. went over my head. I just I was so scared by that pig man that like every time I watch these Saw movies, I'm just like I'm not getting fooled again. So everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, I found the revelation. I'm like, where's the pig? And then the pig jumps out in the second one, and I'm like, got you. You didn't scare me this time. But then by the fourth one, it completely got me again, because uh, I was, like, so numb to it. But, uh, but yeah, the revelations are a big part for me, and part twos just didn't... I don't know. We saw Amanda in the first one with her backstory, and then all of a sudden she's back there again in a trap. It just seemed, And she, she stayed huddled to the boy the whole time, and it just seemed kind of obvious that, you know... She was protecting the boy. I thought they were kindred spirits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, part four, this one is probably one of my least favorites out of all of them. It's Aww. kind of the bridge between uh, the first trilogy and the second set. It, it, we get we get some cool backstory on John in this one, which I appreciate. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this one. None of it wasn't really my favorite. It, this one I guess like a two point five out of five. I mean, this is probably my least favorite. Um. I'm not sure if it was around this movie. It might have been around the second movie. It was before we found out anything about Jigsaw. They released a stop-motion comic for Saw. It was a prequel for Jigsaw. Are you are any are both of you familiar with that? Uh-uh. No. It was um. It was he. He was a toy maker. He was a toy maker for a factory, and he was he was clinically depressed. He thought life was meaningless, and his wife ends up leaving him. I don't. I can't remember if there was a kid involved, but he, he tries to kill himself and he survives. And that's when he has like, he's going he's to put people in traps and make them appreciate life. And that was the backstory before they did the whole cancer thing, uh, having different apprentices. Um, that comic was the, the prequel. So I was wondering what you would think of that compared to the more you found out in four. I don't know. It's hard uh, to I'll say if you haven't watch. seen it. It's like, it's like five minutes long. It's like an animated comic online. I think it came in the DVD. I will tell you the only thing I really remember. I, we just watched these movies literally over the past five days. Uh, rewatched them, and I can't, can't even remember much about Part Four. That, that's how forgettable it is to me. Um, all I remember. I love is, Part Four. All all I really remember from Part Four is all the stuff with Kramer, his backstory and stuff. Um, but yeah, two point five out of five for me on this one. This isn't so forgettable. Um, but after this one, I mean, we do meet Hoffman in this movie, so I'm going to go ahead and up it to. Actually, a Hoffman script. was a forensics guy in the third one, picking up the chains from the uh, teddy bear explosion. Ah, uh, okay. Well, 
I didn't catch that, but I know he's a detective in this one uh, for a, for a small, you know, a couple small parts. I'm gonna in, the give... thir- in the third one, he's clearly putting evidence in his pocket, like in the background. Really? Yeah, if you, if you watch closely, but I'll have to yeah, go back I, and check it out. I thought the fourth one was pretty good. I mean, it, it because Rig is the SWAT guy, and he's one of the only people standing from the second, third, and fourth one, and. Instead of putting him directly in a trap, Jigsaw is putting him in situations where he has to finish Jigsaw's work of putting other people in traps. So it's almost like, learn from me. I'm not the bad guy you think I am. So it really changed the dynamic of... I, that was um, five. I, I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, is it, yeah. Isn't that part five? No, part five is the people... Um, there's, five, there's five people all involved in a business scam oh shit and you're right as, as they go through they get picked off one by I'm one get, hey i'm getting my movies mixed up this is this is the one where uh part four is that's rig going through and like the wife who got beat by her husband has to pull the things out but it kills him so he didn't put and them in the trap but he the has one, to like yeah this yeah this this is the perfect this is the perfect okay. score one for me because, and uh, and Hoff, Hoffman and Detective yeah. Matthews, like Hoffman's in the electric chair yeah, and you're right, Matthews you're right. on the ice block, and it's, it's a balancing beam. I, for some reason, I was putting four and five in the same movie in my head, but yeah, part four is a five out of five for me, actually, because yeah. the revelation with Hoffman standing up from the trap yep. and everything, uh, when you think he's going to get electrocuted, everything is just fucking so badass with that. And the, the wife had been beat pulling the uh, spikes out of herself, killing her abusive husband. I thought that was a really cool scenario. But yeah, uh, this one, I'll, I'll give this one a five out of five just because the Hoffman, this is where we get introduced to the new Jigsaw. So yeah, uh, that's and, my bad. I, I was putting two movies together in my head. Yeah, and, um, and, and three and four run parallel to each other and they meet yeah. up at the end. Yeah, that, that was another cool part. Because um, then you got Strom getting locked in the room at the end of four. Uh, the room where Jigsaw's dead body is. Uh, Hoffman standing there and shuts the door. So yeah, five out of five. Uh, I, I was mixing that up. I was I was thinking something else. Um, I was going along with you, like yeah. No. Yeah, because it, it, four and five just kind of meld together for me with Hoffman. Um, part five is another five out of five for me because I think Hoffman is a badass Jigsaw. Oh, uh, before we go on to part five, I'll never forget because I had a couple friends going with me to these movies and. We were with it, and when four ended, and it leaves it open for uh, Hoffman being the apprentice. On there, my friend Amber got up and said "fuck saw" and left. And she was like, "I'm done with this franchise. It's never gonna end. There's gonna be like ten of them." And I was like, "She's not wrong, but I will still be in this theater, um, and I will still be continuing to go to these movies." But I'll just never forget. She just completely tapped out. I love there's, a point, I there's a point in every crazy. franchise where we tap out, but it's, it's not Saw for me just yet. It makes so much sense that Hoffman would would be there because there's no way Amanda and Kramer could have done all that by themselves, you know? And uh, Chris, He's sick and dying, and she's 90 pounds, so... Yeah, so yeah, it, it made sense. There's an engineer. Yeah, the, yeah. We found that out in Jigsaw, which is cool. Um, part 5 is a 5 out of 5 for me, like I said. The traps were great, uh, and the, the Hoffman story was great. I do not know why Part 5 had the lowest box office. I have no idea. But, uh, it, like I said, it's an unpopular horror opinion that my favorites are the, Hoffmans, the Hoffman ones. Um, I love the ending. The whole thing with Strom and him setting Strom up, getting the FBI onto Strom. Uh, the whole glass box thing. He, Strom hears a noise. You know Hoffman made that noise on purpose. So he, you know, Hoffman comes in. Hoffman gets put into the box. And if Strom had just listened to the whole tape, instead of being a cocky asshole, um, things might have played out different. Uh, but yeah, I'll, that's why I've got this as my backdrop. That is the most badass scene in the whole film series for me. Uh, I give the, Actually, I give part five a six out of five. That's how much I like this one. So what do you think, Sean? Um, you know, I think they mentioned it in the behind the scenes. This has got to be one of the only times in cinema we've ever seen somebody actually crushed by a room. And yeah. they, uh, the hero always gets out at the last minute. Star Wars, any of that stuff. But in this one, they're just like, you die. And the, the, they, they even said that with the pressure coming, there are wooden walls, but the pressure, like, he, he could have died. And then when, when his head's in the cube, he could have drowned. Like, the guy playing Strom was like, 
that I could have died in any one of these traps in the movie. Uh, <laughs> um, but he seemed pretty cool that he like he thought he was gonna be in six, and they they started taking a cast of his head and stuff, and they're like, "What are you doing? Uh, you die." And he's, "Oh, well, I guess I'm not in part six then." Uh, what do you get part five? Five. Five. Yeah. Uh, I love. I just love uh, Hoffman watching from the box, getting to see this. You know, he he played it perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played it perfectly, mm-hmm. and he 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 is so good at manipulating people. It's like he he has the jigsaw games, and everything else is a game too. And he's he's moving the pieces. That's what I love about Hoffman. He's always one step ahead of everybody. Sometimes more. Well, than just one think step. of the traps. I mean, Gordon. they um there were five people and that they assumed that one person had to die in every trap going through the series, but they all could have survived every exactly. trap if they had just worked together as a team. Um, I love that, that we find out in part seven that those two made it. They didn't bleed out and die. Yeah. Cause that last trap is so brutal. You know, his arm is like cut down the middle. Uh, one of, that's one of the most gruesome things and it's just flopping. It like the fingers and uh, it it was really cool to find out because he told him your 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 life your instinct will tell you to do one thing but I implore you to do the opposite. It was right there from the beginning, just like it always is with Jigsaw, and uh, I love that. Um, so yeah, this movie was perfect for me. I think I think it's probably the best one in the series. Um, it's my top. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll rate them later or rank them later. Um, part six. Um, I love the That's Hoffman. The, one with the, the health insurance agency. Yes, uh, yeah. that was pretty cool to see the backstory between him and Kramer, uh, where Kramer was denied coverage. Um, I love that he got put in situations where blood was literally on his hands every every trap he came to, and I love the bait and switch thing. You think that the mom and kid is his wife and kid. Uh, but really, the reporter is his family, the sister, and they're the wife and kid of the man that died because of him. Um, and his death is probably one of the best, too, getting pumped full of all that acid. Oh, yeah, and the bottom half of his body just goes boom. Just falls out, yeah. Um, but the Hoffman stuff in this one is pretty cool. I love whenever you, – you can tell when Perez comes back and uh, Erickson, they know that – they know Hoffman's the guy. They know it. They figured it out. They're playing really coy with him. They go. They call him in to go listen to the de scrambling of that tape. You know, uh, what is what is it at this moment? You're feeling helpless. No. Yeah, uh, at the, and the and then you hear his voice. And as this is happening, if you watch the FBI agents as it's being de scrambled, they move their coats back and put their hands on their hips like by their gun. You know, they're anticipating his because they know that they're about to expose him. Yeah. And he, but he knows it too, and that's another thing I like about Hoffman. As he's standing there, knowing he's about to be exposed, he's already gone a step ahead of him. He gets himself a cup of coffee. He's got the whole room mapped out, and he's got the tape down ready. And when his voice pops up and they turn, they're all dead within seconds. You know, um, pretty bad. It's pretty badass, and that's another reason I like Hoffman. I think he's superior, and I'm going to give uh, this one a five too because I love it. Cool. Yeah, I think I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I like, you know, there, there were some Saw movies where, like, nobody survives any traps, but these ones clearly have somebody who survives. Because I know one, th- one big thing with Jigsaw is, like, I'm not a murderer, I don't like murderers, but I'm like, some of your traps were just fucking unwinnable. Like, um, but even back in the first one, um, with the barbed wire thing and the... The, the guy that had the candle no, and he no. had flammable stuff. I just, I don't see, I mean, but he was a safe cracker, but I guess he just ran out of time. But he some of those traps just guy, seem really. The guy that ki- that killed Gideon had a chance. He got out of the chair. Yeah, that he guy had, did. He had a choice. He could walk out and leave or he could attack Kramer. That was I'm talking about the I'm him. talking about the I'm talking about the fat guy with the barbed wire in the first. Oh, one. I thought you were talking about when Kramer steps out of the way and that dude falls into the barbed no, wire. No, that that got that That's guy. Yeah, he had a chance. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, Hoffman, you know, gotcha, starts giving gotcha. people chances up until the part where he's about to get caught. Then he's just killing everybody. 
Well, he kills everybody that's not in a trap, you know, yeah. if they're going to take him down. But in, at least he's still he's still doing it the right way. He he does follow through with the traps that Jigsaw wanted, and that's one thing I'm like, he doesn't have to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that it okay. was kind of cool. So we're at part seven Before now. Before you press forward, okay. have you watched? Uh, are you watching like the regular cuts of these or the director's cuts? Director's cuts. Director's cuts. Okay, there because. I distinctly remember like when I would see these movies in theaters and I'd get the movie and they'd only sell the director's cut and I'm just like, why why would you do there's not even that many differences. There's just like a couple seconds of an edit or there might be a little more blood. In in Saw Two, any additional scene is slightly green. I don't know why the hell they did it, but you can tell there's a color difference between what they added after the fact. Oh, okay. Um like there's a scene in part three where Lynn tries to steal the key from Amanda. She beats the shit out of her and then tries to use it but can't figure out how to get the key in. And they just go about their days like nothing happened. But in the theatrical version, that didn't happen. Huh? Uh, so <laughs> it's got a weird scene that happened. Um, I'm going to probably shock people with my score for Part 7 because I love it so much. But there's one thing in it that take, that shaves two points off for me. And it has to do with what you said about Jigsaw. Um, Jigsaw set these, these were set up by Kramer. They were planned out by Kramer. Um, I did enjoy the opening scene in the final chapter with the two guys and the, the cheating girl, the one that was using them, you know, seeing both of them. Yeah. And they're like, it looks like we're breaking up with you. Mm-hmm. Um, that was fucking awesome. And uh, it's in public for everyone to it, see. So it's like their that, private affair is. Yeah, that was really cool. I wish we could have seen how he set that up. Uh, how, how did nobody get them out of there? They're, we're all voyeurs, I guess. We have a voy- voyeuristic... I just want to watch. I, yeah, you just want to watch. How did no, nobody... they probably thought it was like a publicity stunt. Is this Banksy? <laughs> <laughs> no, these people are dying. <laughs> it was cool to see it in public. Um, you know, going back to something I kind of glazed over on uh, um, part six was they got more extreme. And in this one, the public thing, and then the people in the junkyard, you know? Yeah, that was pretty cool. That yeah, was pretty cool. With Chester Bennington, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Feeling his skin off. screaming, I just kept expecting him to go, I think I'm so numb. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he must have done that at least once on the set. Oh, I guarantee it. Um, I thought the Hoffman story was uh, tied up good, the Jill stuff. I like how. Parts, yeah, Jill. <laughs> damn it, she did not want to be a part of all that, and she, but you know what she did to. And that's something we left out on our score for part six. Oh. Not only did Hoffman, uh, you know, protect himself and survive, but at the end of part six, whenever he gets the bear trap on him, he survives that shit. Gets half of his face ripped open, you know, and then in part seven, he's just sewing that shit up like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Um, yeah. just sewing it back together. Um, but yeah, part seven, the traps were awesome. They really stepped that up. The dream sequence was a pretty cool kill with Jill. Um, part seven's all about the, the guy that says he was in a trap so he can do support groups and yes. get the fame and everything. But John Patrick Jigsaw Clarence. actually puts him in traps. Yep. Yes, I, got I, young I, that's, Indiana Jones right there. That's what's going to boondock Saints guy right there, uh, yeah. John Patrick Flannery. Uh, that's... that's we're this. I'm going to shave a couple points, but I'm saving that for last. Um, I really enjoyed the, the the stuff with Carrie Always. I, I I'd forgot so much in the movie until I watched it the other day, and I was like, I guarantee we're going to get a slow clap from Carrie Always at that Survivor <laughs> uh, group meeting, and then he didn't disappoint. Yeah, um, that was funny. Uh, <laughs> Hoffman stuff was with Jill was pretty cool. Uh, finally taking her out the way. He was one step ahead of them, sent that tape in to send that IA guy who we could not figure out who he was. Finally, we did. He was the friend from Final Destination. Yep. Uh, part one. Uh, did you know that? The IA guy was in Final it's Destination. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways, I liked how Hoffman took him on a wild goose chase, uh, staged the explosion at the junkyard so he could get in one of the body bags. He takes out all the cops in the station. Uh, all the ones that are back at the trap house get killed, too, because of something he set up. Um, I like how everybody that Sean Patrick Flannery tries to save gets killed. 
Uh, they don't disappoint in this movie with the gore. They, it's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to be the last one, so I get it why nobody survived. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – wait, I'm not going to say my negative part yet. The ending was awesome. Hoffman thought he was getting away. He was done with it. Uh, then we get one of the coolest revelation endings with the, with the score. We find out that uh, Dr. Gordon – was the one that Jill dropped that tape off for in part six, that package. Yeah. That was and finding out that he had done all the medical work uh, for all the traps and shit what made so much sense. You know, it really, it tied everything back to the first movie. And uh, whenever he takes Hoffman, chains him up in there, and Hoffman goes for that, for that hacksaw, you know. <laughs> And uh, Gordon picks it up. He's like, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Uh, <laughs> that was just perfect. Uh, and it's kind of cool as Gordon's walking out of the room before he says game over. He looks over and sees his foot. And he does this really cool acting thing where it's like he's looking at it with disgust, but not like disgust for having lost it, but like disgust for who he used to be, yeah. you know, compared to who he is now. Much. The way he does that with just his features was really good acting. Uh, and I, at this point, I would give the movie five out of five because it was a great ending. Hoffman had a really cool arc. Who knows? He might survive. He might get out somehow. They could have done something with that. Because, uh, I mean, he's gotten out of other shit. You know, I, I, I was saying I can see him ripping a rib bone out, breaking his ribs and ripping one out and sharpening it up and cutting his, other, cutting his foot off or something. Um, but, yeah, Hoffman thing, time Gordon back. The revelation, I would give it a five out of five, except Jigsaw did something that really he shouldn't have. The wife of the faker, oh, yeah, getting cooked alive. Whenever that trap goes up around her, I thought it was going to protect her with the first time I saw it. It set the whole he, room on fire or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he, he's thinking his wife's about to get burned alive, but it's but really. She does. He's, than he does, and she's protected. But it goes the opposite, and she just gets cooked in front of him. He's screaming in agony because he got his pectoral muscles ripped because Jigsaw made him do the thing he lied about, which was impossible to begin with. Uh, and then it's we don't know any we don't know what happened after that. He's just sitting there screaming. His wife gets cooked alive. Innocent woman didn't even know he lied about it like the other people did. Yeah. And uh, that that for that reason only. I give it a three out of five. It just didn't feel right to me. Right. But the rest of the movie was awesome. So, yeah. I agree. Your thoughts? Yeah. I agree completely. It was great. It was awesome. And then you're going to kill somebody that's innocent. Okay. I'm with What about you, Sean? What's your thoughts on this one in your rating? I just keep imagining an alternate universe where he kills all these people and then he rushes to his office to, like, confess to his lawyer, like, American Psycho style. Like, oh, I just stabbed a bunch of cops in the neck and I, I cooked a woman. Uh, I, I just don't think I'm going to get away with it this time. And he's, like, crying on the, crying on the phone. Just, oh, keep your eyes open. Just, Why like, does Hoffman have to look so much like Strom? Why did they get two actors uh, going back to five and six? Strom, yeah. and the guy that plays Strom, the guy that plays Hoffman, they, they're very similar build and facial structures. And, like, I'm like, wait, 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 is that? Oh, okay. Nope, okay. that's Hoffman. No, nope, that's strong. But, yeah, your thoughts on Seven, man. Sorry. Yeah, no. I just, honestly, honestly, I feel like Hoffman was going, I don't feel like this movie hit his trajectory. I think if they had kept their trilogy plans for Seven, Eight, and Nine, you know, it, it might have ended like this movie ended, but with going to six, I feel like it just teetered straight down into insanity. And I just, I really wish we had had more time with this character, but I understand there was a lot of rewrites. There was stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of weird to base my rating on what could have been, but I, I feel like the plug got pulled too early. So that, that is going to affect my score. So well, just- I would say, uh, Five out of ten. Not bad, but could have been just a little bit better if we didn't try to rewrite. I mean, I hear that even Carrie Ilways didn't come back until seven because of financial contract disputes with the series. Not like he didn't want to come back in the first place. So it's it's one of those things where you're wondering if this was written organic to the story or was stuff going on behind the scenes. Because there's been movies and TV shows 
where a character does something completely out of character and you find out that it literally was just different writers being brought in and other writers getting fired for dumb reasons and then they bring back other writers and just... I really felt like Saw was losing its grip on reality with the timeline because of bringing in new directors, bringing in new writers. I mean, even when we go into Jigsaw, it was almost a a completely different team of directors, writers, producers. That's why Jigsaw feels so different than, like, this set. But that's what's going to lead us into talking about Jigsaw. Yeah. I had a theory about Hoffman on 4, 5, 6, and 7. At the end of 4, you know, he was... It's like, what's going on with him? Nothing really there. It's just, you know, it's you got to watch five. Then in five, he's kind of sympathetic because he killed the boyfriend that killed his sister, you know, the, her ex-boyfriend. And that's what got him started. To And so he's kind of sympathetic. And then, he, you know, he does that badass thing at the end in the glass coffin, coffin and everything. Almost said Kaufman. And, uh, <laughs> but then it's like they, they made him too likable. And in part six... You get the stuff with him teasing fucking uh, Amanda and shit. Yeah. You know that he 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 was blackmailing her to shoot that other. It's like they purposely tried to make him more and more unlikable and crazy uh, each movie. That's what I was saying. Like his his art kind of goes a little bit like that. If they had kept so. him the same as Five and he did similar things, it would have been. It would have made him seem even maybe more people would agree with me that he was superior to Kramer because not only was he able to survive death he was able to survive all this other shit that was happening that was uh, you know could have destroyed him uh, but yeah let, let's 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 talk about the last two uh jigsaw we just watched that one for the first before we time. get into that i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go get some more water i'll be i'll be right back okay okay we've gone double length that don't usually happen <laughs> oh boy It is hot in this room. All right. So, uh, Jigsaw. Yeah, um... We, me and her just watched that for the first time tonight. Uh, I thought I saw it a long time ago, but I did not. Uh, my thoughts on it, it confused the hell out of me for a while. But I will say, like I did with Spiral, uh, I predicted something and I was correct about it. And then she predicted something and she was correct about it. It's like we both kind of uh, guessed it. Um, whenever the ME's assistant became a suspect... I was like, no, no, it's the Emmy. He's the one that's been doing this and that. And then uh, when the bullet, whenever he gets arrested and he goes and pulls that bullet out, I was like, if that bullet matches the gun of the detective he's trying to say is guilty, then it's the Emmy. He's the one doing this, you know? And then we get to the part with Kramer and everything. Kramer shows up, takes his hood off. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, (laughs) what if this is... Like ten years ago, this is back before he died. This is back before he died. You know, and uh, how many times yeah. we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Supergirl, <laughs> Supergirl from Smallville is the baby killer. Did you know that? I didn't watch That's, Smallville. Oh, you, you're fired. What is that? The twentieth time? Yeah, you're really fired. it's okay. Um, Smallville's great, but it's not horror related, so you're good. Um, anyways. <laughs> This movie was confusing, but it had some really cool traps. I just don't see... Okay, Kramer, you talked about him being... Some of the stuff wasn't fair and stuff, but I thought it was cool how in the Revelation, you find out that Emmy was the one that mixed up the x-rays, and as he's about to die, Jigsaw shuts the trap down and runs in there and grabs him and saves him. Because it was a... It was a human error. Innocent human error. Mistake. It that, wasn't out of malice or anything. Exactly. No, you're right. That's us letting you go. That's it. It showed a more human human side of Kramer than you've seen in a few movies. Uh, I like that. Um, I love the fact that you find out he was in it. He helped in 
was like an engineer of a lot of the traps and stuff with uh, with Kramer, which makes it even better uh, whenever he goes into that. If you, you think back to whenever he went into the Emmy, to his assistant's uh, secret area where she had all those traps, the jigsaw traps and stuff, because he's looking at his own work. You don't know it yet till the end, but he helped build all of those traps that she has, so that makes that even cooler. I like the fact that he doesn't say game over at the end. That, uh, you know, he says, I speak for the dead now. Uh, taking over, you know, they, they really could have ran with that, with him taking over for Kramer, uh, you know, 10 years after the fact. I love the laser trap. Oh, my God. As yeah. soon as it happened, because I wasn't sure if it was him yet, but at that point, I mean, I, I suspected it, and I, I was guessing that. But when the blood squirts out of him, you know, when the lasers go down, I was like, he's going to pull a Hoffman. Yeah, he's because, pulling a Hoffman. Because he didn't split open yeah. like the other dude did. I was like, wait, wait, no, no. I was like, he's going to pull a Hoffman. He's getting up in a minute, you know. I'm just and, thinking uh, of um, scary movie, touches the blood, ketchup, just like mom puts on her spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we both dug the detective getting his head cut open in all those spots like a Demogorgon from Stranger Things. Yep. Uh, the revelation was cool. Getting get, everything getting explained. Uh, I thought this guy would have made a good person to take over for Hoffman. Uh, yeah, disciple because uh, he was he was good like Hoffman was. He had all of his bases covered. He had the IA detective on his side. His assistant was his alibi. Everything was he he was set to go to take over for Jigsaw. But they did not run with that for some reason. I would give that one a four out of five. It was a little redundant. It didn't need to be made, but it was still entertaining. And I would give it a five if they had made more, but it just seems pointless at this point. Right. The whole movie seems pointless. Right. To me. And we just stopped until Spiral. And... Yeah, so yeah. I'll give it a four out of five just because it, it kept you guessing. The ending was cool. He pulled a Hoffman, and uh, yeah, I'll give it a four out of five. I'll give it a three out of five because it's just, just pointless. Just yeah. pointless. It really, like you said, it's redundant. Um, the lasers that was pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Now the blender, I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. all in all, it's just a three out of five. Just, just, just done. Just done. <laughs> what do you got? It was yeah, it was kind of lackluster. Didn't really, it didn't you know, feel like the other ones. Didn't get didn't get the blood pumping. I mean, to me, the one thing that kind of saves it from just being you know forget about it in five days is the six minutes with John Kramer Jigsaw was like the best scene of the entire movie, especially when the guy's like, "Why am I here? Uh, it's your test. I passed your test." No, no, you did not follow my rules, and that is why you lost a leg. But you don't like playing rules, do you? And he, like, dissects the guy. But it really makes me wonder, how the fuck does Jigsaw know all this? How does he know that the guy was drunk driving when he was a teenager and bought some evidence? Like, I, I know he had a cop on the inside, Hoffman, oh, but yeah. some of these details, I don't know how he knows. Like, how did in the, he in have the a tape? One, how did he have a tape ready? To know that that guy's leg was going to be caught for not following the rules and stepping through that one wooden plank. Because he probably had several different avenues. Okay, so there's just tape out. players all over the place just in well, case. Have you watched the movie? Yeah, they're okay, everywhere. Okay, okay, that, That's a good thing. Well, part. in the, in the what third does he do one. With all the other tapes? Just collect them after the trap's over? Yeah, I didn't mean, oh. use this one. <laughs> More for the box. The, the third one, when the woman's in the freezer, it's like, oh, yeah, uh, when a drunk driver hit your son, this woman saw it happen and just drove off. I'm like, how the fuck does he know that? What Was she bragging in a bar? Like, hey, I, I was a witness, but I didn't say anything, cause, uh, and Jigsaw just heard it. Like, I don't, how would he know a woman was a witness or something? Well, what, what do you give this movie? Eh, five out of ten. I mean, it wasn't bad. It, it could have been better, but it, it wasn't horrible. I just was it, it it's very it's very forgettable. Was it needed? Do you think it was needed? No, I mean, it was almost like CSI meets Jigsaw. That, that's kind of what it felt like, and that's they, not the feel of the other ones. If they had followed it up with the sequel with that guy, it might and just gone back to like the traps and stuff. It maybe it. What this one lacked was the grittiness of the other movies. This one was like bright and vibrant. It was 
the film looked really well done, like the filming of it. And that's what I like about Spiral, which we're getting into the last one. That's one of the things I like about it. It gets back to like the dark, gritty, low-budget feel of the first Saw. Um, that's something I enjoyed about Spiral. Um, I love the idea that Kramer's long dead, the Jigsaw murders are long in the past, but it's the idea, the spiral, the, the symbol of what Kramer stood for, what Jigsaw stood for, is what's going to carry on. Because they could make so many movies now with just people, like, like it's almost like a cult, mm-hmm. you know, uh, of these people carrying out the, the legacy and the symbol of Jigsaw. And that they, would be awesome. And they can pop up anywhere, not just one little area of the world. They yeah. pop up anywhere, and it could be anytime, anywhere, anything, anyone. You know, anywhere in the world, you mm-hmm. know, something in a different country. That, that could, might be interesting. Yeah, I think that would be cool if they, if they did that. Um, that's the stuff I liked about the movie. What I didn't like, I got a witness here. I (laughs) had, I had the killer. I had the jigsaw, I had the copycat killer picked from the first 15 minutes of the movie. I said, why is that rookie getting so much attention? Why are we hearing all this? Should we throw a spoiler out like right here? I mean, the movie just came out like a few weeks ago. Oh crap. Sorry. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to know what I'm talking about, don't listen. Don't listen if you haven't seen Spiral. you got five seconds. Five, four, three. Wait, 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 wait. You can either keep watching and have it spoiled, or you can stop watching now and watch yourself and find out and enjoy it. The choice is yours. Wait. Make your choice. There you go. <laughs> Um, okay. live or die <laughs> spoil or unspoiled make your choice alright you made your choice alright so you made your choice uh, yeah so I, I predicted it was the rookie he, he did so many things he was getting too much attention and then they go to uh, the, the scene of the guy that got killed in the subway and he's like I've been what, kidding me I've been waiting on this for 12 years um, what was something else there was something else he did oh the I'm baby looking crying the, oh looking at the picture of uh, he looked at the, he looked at the picture of Samuel Jackson's yeah. character and said, "He's the reason I'm here. Yeah. Uh, dad, here. If it wasn't for your dad, I wouldn't be here exactly." And then the baby crying, and he never even looks over his shoulder or anything, and he's sitting there playing on the computer. Um, but yeah, it got to the point at the end where I was actually hoping that Chris Rock's character, Chris Rock, kicked ass in this movie. By the way, he did. He really did. Samuel Jackson did as normal. Samuel Jackson gets an awesome death, too. Uh, that was pretty badass. Uh, anyways, Billy's not in the movie. It's like a pig puppet now, but that's okay. It's going to be different for every killer if they keep doing this. Um, but, yeah, I was hoping that Chris Rock's character would have taken uh, up on the offer of going in to the elevator and joining him and dispensing this justice like Jigsaw. I love the revelation at the end where Chris Rock had like told the boy to be quiet, shushed him so he wouldn't get killed too. And then as the guy's going down the elevator and Chris Rock's, you know, at gunpoint, the guy shushes, you know, does the shush thing to him. Uh, if it wasn't so predictable, I'd give it five out of five, but it was dark, gritty, back to the basics. All the people did a good job. Uh, the only person who did not do a good job was the female captain. Oh she God. is the worst actress in the world I've ever seen. Uh, uh, she must have been somebody's wife, the director's she, wife, something. She reminded me of like some generic female captain from like a NCIS spinoff or something. Uh, every, everything she said was just overacted, over the top. Uh, or not. Or not, yeah. yeah. So I give this one a 3.5 out of 5. If it wasn't for her annoying bad acting, I'd give it a 4. It, it returns to its roots. It's got a cool idea. We could probably get some spinoff movies from this with the idea of Jigsaw spreading across the globe, across the world. So, yeah, 3.5 out of 5. I'm going to give it a 3, almost a 2.5. This predictability, and it, I don't know. It just it, Everything's just been done. They're going to have to do something. They're going to have to step it up in the next one, not make it yeah. so off. It felt like they dumbed this one down. Oh, my gosh, it does. It, it, the world is getting dumber. And our movies are getting dumber because people have to understand them. It, it just seemed like they dumbed it down, yeah. Like, 
there were parts and it's like, why are they saying that? That's obvious. It's so obvious. Why are you explaining like, that to us? It's like explaining that that fruit over there is an apple or something. Look at that yellow piece of, what is that? Is that, is that fruit? Oh, it's a banana. It's a banana. Uh, all right. That's our scores. What do you got, Sean? This is, you get the last rating of the night. Dun, dun, dun. I seem to be the only person who did not see that coming with the killer. I was really trying not to focus on it. I was looking at the cinematography. I was looking at the acting. I, you know, I, I, just, I spent a year thinking about it, and if I overthought it, I was going to kill the movie experience. So I just, I really was trying to go at least be a good movie. And with this movie really, se- it seemed to me like this movie wasn't a Saw movie to begin with. It seemed like it was a movie about somebody who wanted to hold the police accountable for yeah. their excessive use of power, and they were targeting cops. But it, I feel like somebody chimed in and went, yo, this is eerily similar to Saw. Do you think we should call the Saw people so we don't get a lawsuit? And they're just like, oh, well, this isn't Spiral. This is a Spiral from the book of Saw. It could be a spinoff. Let's, let's throw some Jigsaw references in there and call it, you know, a spinoff. But I feel like if they had not done the jigsaw aspect i feel like we could have had a really good seven meet saw meets you know somebody trying to play the system like i feel like we could have had a really good drama thriller but i feel like anytime it tries to connect to jigsaw the movie goes down a little bit like there's one part where chris rock is handcuffed to a pipe with a saw but then he picks it and gets out and i'm like what did that even that didn't even go anywhere. Like yeah. it didn't prevent him from getting the key and saving the guy because it was just a riddle he could have, you know, deduced. I, I just there were some scenes like that in the movie that didn't make any sense, but they were throwbacks to the Saw movies. So I feel like trying to look backwards is what was preventing them from going forward and being a much better movie. Chris Rock was fantastic. Uh, the music was fantastic. Uh, cinematography i just feel that um movie could have been better it it wasn't as good as i hoped it would be but wasn't as bad as i feared it would be so what's your score three out of five one out of ten you did all the other ones out of ten so what was this one out of ten six six yeah i guess uh that, that math isn't right but i'm tired (laughs) <laughs> okay, yeah, we're tired, too. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, just real fast, I'm going to go in my order here. Best to worst, we said we were going to do it. Uh, my favorite would be, would we go five, four, six, or five, four, seven, six, one, three, two, spiral jigsaw. That's my that's my list right here. I can, I can go with that one, too. I can. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one, two, three, seven, one, three, two. Okay. Yeah. So I'll give it, you can't force me to do that because I think each of them have pros and cons, but Jigsaw was the most boring and I'll put that one at the bottom. Which one Jigsaw is? Jigsaw, okay. just because it bored me. Like the uh, the other ones at least had some pizzazz, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that Jigsaw, just Jigsaw just had me kind of yawning a little bit. Yeah. The, I got excited at the Kramer part and, and the when the guy pulled the Hoffman, that's about it. But uh Yeah. My my mood really fluctuates and if I want a little more action, I go to the second one. If I want, you know, more backstory, I'll go to the fourth one. You know, I I, I pick and choose which one is like my favorite at the time, but it, it's it's hard for me to pick a favorite, kinda like with Doctors and Doctor Who, but I can definitely tell you that Jigsaw is my least favorite, just like the sixth doctor is my least favorite doctor. I got her, uh, I showed her the clip of uh, Doctor Who when David Tennant's doctor met the devil. Yeah. Yeah, she, I'm, she's going she's gonna to check out the show now, so yay. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Sean, for hanging. This has kind of been like a little over a double episode, but, you know, we haven't been here in a while, so uh, thank you, patrons, all for supporting the channel. Could not do it without you. Love each and every one of you. Uh, Please keep on supporting the channel. It's what keeps it alive. Hope you enjoyed our breakdown of the Saw series. Maybe this is something we'll do on After the Slash, break down some you know, film franchises. Maybe not franchises that have nine parts every time. Uh, you know, Maybe three or four, maybe Hatchet or something. Believe it uh, or not, Evil Bong has eight. Oh my that gosh. is crazy. Uh, oh but I want to say thank you to Sean for being an awesome co-host. 
thank you to my wife Beth for talking with us, watching the Saw franchise with me, and uh, rating it with us tonight. And uh, yeah, be excellent to each other. Thank you. Later, everyone. If you see Evil <laughs> Bong, let me know what you think. Uh, <laughs> I can't be the only person who's watched these. Evil Bong remake. Uh, it's the tenth movie. I'm sure that's coming out soon. So. <laughs> Or the prequel, the the semi mean bong or something. Well, well, the sequel actually goes to like the origins of the bong. Tell me at least Cheech and Chong are in one of the movies. Yeah, uh, Tommy Chong is the guy who, you know, they get the evil bong in the first one, and they try to find out where it came from. And Tommy Chong beats him, and they're like, "Why did you sell us an evil bong?" He was like, "I didn't sell it to you, man. Like my wife did." She's selling out all my shit. She wants me to die. Like, uh, she's telling everyone I'm dead. You know, she just sold all my stuff, and I checked my bong here. I want it back. And he was like, I got it in South America in the Peace Corps in the 60s. Oh, my God. Okay, this some is, tribal village. We're going to have to visit this series in the future. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, have a good night, everybody. Sean, take care. Get some rest. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. Later. Be able to sustain such a traumatic experience and uh, and yet find the positive in that grisly act it's a remarkable feat indeed <laughs> remarkable if not a little perverse i salute you you have not merely endured <laughs>